Hey there, and welcome to the 110 book. Today we're going to start with exercise one, which admittedly is probably one of my least favorites just because it's so dry and technical and I don't know, it's not that exciting. However, it is very important to know this information, so that doesn't mean you should skip it. It's all about inputs and outputs and uh, getting to know the Pro Tools uh, edit window a little bit better. It's actually a pretty good intro for the 110 book. It's like, okay, let's get back into the swing of things. But, you know, after the 101 book and automation and mixing and bouncing, you expect to, the next thing to be super cool and you're like, oh, the I.O. panel, wow. <laughs> so, but you know, let's get through it and, uh, and it is valuable information, especially if you are working in a facility that has multiple inputs and outputs. This is information that you absolutely need to know. So let's get to it. Okay. Here, as you can see, lesson one, exercise one, setting up a session. So first of all, let me get to my finder window here. We are going to be working with a the Pro Tools 110 exercise media. So this, from this point forward, is the folder you will be accessing for uh, exercises. And there's some really cool ones in here. Uh, to work with uh, much more video this time around for this book. So for the for you video folks, um, finally we're getting into video. Uh, okay, so let's see what it says to do. We need to modify our I/O system settings for inputs, outputs, and bus paths. So we're going to launch Pro Tools and dismiss the dashboard if it appears by clicking cancel. Okay, so. Here's Pro Tools, here is the dashboard. I'm gonna cancel it. Okay, with no session open, choose Setup I.O. to open up the I.O. Setup dialog box. Okay, so let's just make sure our Pro Tools application is open. That's the thing. When you open up Pro Tools, that dashboard opens up that, that basically asks you if you wanna start a new project or open up a recent project or session. And, uh, if you hit cancel, it doesn't close Pro Tools. It's still open. It just basically hides. So you sometimes have to hit the application icon to make it active again. So, setup, I.O. For the input output. There it is. Okay, what do we do now? So let's see, select input from the tabs at the top of the box and it will display the system settings based on the hardware you are currently using. So this is where I think sometimes people might get confused. It seems like there's a lot of complex stuff going on here. But when you click on these different tabs, you're like, what does all this mean? Well, it can only mean what your system is telling it to mean. Probably all of us watching this video are just using Pro Tools on a laptop or your desktop computer with no additional accessories or peripherals. And by that I mean you don't have an interface, you don't have uh, any sort of uh, external microphones going to your computer, things like that. So if you have limited inputs and outputs, you're not going to be seeing much input many inputs and outputs because Pro Tools just analyzes your system to see what's there. For example, here I've got my built-in microphone for my input and that's it. Click on output, I've got my built-in output which is my headphone jack and that's it. If I was in like a recording studio there would be a lot more selections because there would be additional hardware plugged into a big old desktop computer um, and we would be utilizing this a lot more. Okay, so we are on input. So, let's see here. As you can see in the ebook, it's showing you something different than probably what you have. That's okay, you could still complete this exercise. Double click on the top input path to rename it. The path name will be highlighted for editing. Okay, so let's do that. Input. Double click, boom, built-in microphone 1-2. Quick reminder, 
when you see 1-2, that means stereo. It means speaker 1 and speaker 2, or left channel and right channel, 1 and 2. If you click on the little arrow here, you'll see microphone 1, and this stands for mono, in the left channel, microphone 2, mono, right channel. Now you really only have one microphone built into your computer in this situation, but it's a stereo microphone. So Pro Tools splits it up as two mono signals. This goes back to the whole interleaved thing. This is an interleaved input, but if we want to separate it into two discrete mono inputs, we could, just by clicking on this and changing the name. So let's see what it says here. Rename this signal path as custom12, press return or enter when finished, keeping the, the box open. Okay, so not what I would rename it, but what are you going to do? Custom 1-2, hit return, boom. Our input or our microphone has now has a different name in the Pro Tools program. So if you were using, say, maybe you had two different microphones. You, maybe you had a lavalier, and maybe you had a dynamic uh, handheld. So if you wanted, you could call this one lavalier stereo, if you wanted. Or you could call it, if you were using a mono dynamic handheld mic, you could call it dynamic mono. You could call it whatever you want. But in this case, we're calling it custom 1-2 because that is what uh, the book is telling us to do. Okay, so now we're gonna modify the outputs and bus pass. Switch to the output page by clicking on the output tab. Press Command A to select all of the output paths. So what you're gonna see is, um, oh, and then click delete path. All selected output paths will be removed. Ooh, that sounds scary, let's do it. <laughs> okay, output. Again, we're on a computer that's different than the computer that the folks at Avid uh, was using to make this uh, tutorial. So we only, in my case, I only have one output as opposed to there are several. Um, that's okay. We could still do this exercise. So click delete path and then switch to the bus page by clicking on the bus tab. Okay, so click on this, delete path right down here. Watch this. See you later. Scary. <laughs> now Pro Tools is being told that we have an input, our microphone called custom 1-2, but we have no output. So basically we won't be able to hear anything because there is no output assigned to Pro Tools in general because we are in the input output window changing the fundamental structure of our inputs and outputs. Okay, click delete path. Now switch to the bus page by clicking on the bus tab. Reset the bus path to default by clicking default below the path list on the left. It will update to show the default internal bus mixes 1-2, again the stereo, through bus 23-24. When finished, commit the changes you've made by clicking OK. All right, let's do it. So the bus tab, reset the butt pass to the bus, but bus path to default. OK, so uh, right here, it says default all buses. I could say output buses or internal buses, but this is saying all buses. So I hit default. There we go. Mapping to output, that is what changed. So these are all being mapped to the output. That is default. Now we've learned a little bit about buses so far. We're gonna learn more over the next few weeks. But remember, a bus is how a signal gets routed or sent from one track to another track or from one location to another location. So if we, um, what we're telling all the buses now is we want all the buses to just go to our output. Um, that is the default setting.
OK. So when we've done this, click OK. Boom. Done. All right. Seems easy. Now let's create a session. Next, we'll create a new session from the off to work template file included with the course exercise media. So click file, open session, and go to the 110 download media folder to, um, to this guy right there, off to work. And we want to open up the off to work Pro Tools session file. Boom, there it is. And then a dialog box will open displaying default parameters based on the template. There it is. So this uh, this was a project, or I'm sorry, a session that was saved as a Pro Tools template. So a template, again, we're not going to dive into that too much on the 100 level, but a template is just like a template in Word or any other program. It's a session that's set up with parameters uh, saved in a specific way. So think about it, like if you make a Word document, say with like letterhead at the top, and you know for a fact that you're gonna be wanting to use that document style for a future document to create, you save it as a template. That way, next time you open up Microsoft Word, you don't have to place the letterhead at the top of the uh, document, you have a template that every time you open it up, you get a Word document with your fonts already chosen, your font size is chosen, and your temp and your uh, graphic letterhead at the top already placed. That is a template. Same thing for Pro Tools. Um, you can create templates where you've got certain tracks, certain inputs and output configurations already set up, so you don't have to do all this manual stuff that we've been doing up until now. Um, so we're going to name this 110 exercise one, our initials. So okay, 110 exercise one, KT. Okay, and we're going to leave all this stuff the same and it says we want to prompt for location. Navigate to an appropriate location and click Save. If a dialog box appears with a notice regarding the I.O. settings file, click OK to proceed. A new session will open with a single guitar track. OK. So I'm going to save this to... Let's see if it remembers. No, it never remembers. That's, a, that's, that's my computer. It has nothing to do with this. OK. I'm going to save it to my exercise media folder. And I'm going to save it to the off to work. I'm going to save it there. Unable, unable to read I.O. settings file. That's fine because we just changed all of that in the last um, in the last uh, part of this exercise. And now we're opening up something with a different I.O. settings file and it's a little confused. That's OK. We can change that. Hit OK. It still will open it up, and we still have one guitar track, as it says in the workbook. I'm going to close this window to save some screen space. Boom. OK, so let's check my playback engine. Cool. That's what I want. As you can see, here's my input-output control panel right here. You can see it's all grayed out. No input, audio pass selector. It, it doesn't know what's going on. Now, let's click on input, interface, look, custom one, two. So remember, I went up to setup, down to IO, custom one, two. So that is still part of the Pro Tools fundamental um, setup. So every session I open up uh, will have my input set to that. Now let's go to output. Remember what I said for uh, the buses? I went to the bus tab and I said, set it to the default bus paths. In Pro Tools, the default bus paths are busing to the output. So all the buses get sent to the output. See, it says output, but getting ahead of ourselves. Let's go a little more here. 
In this part of the exercise, you will reset the I.O. settings to their defaults and observe the effects that this has on the session. To get started, you will reset the I.O. defaults on input, output, and bus pages. So choose Setup I.O. to open up, select the input page, click the default button. The input paths were set to their defaults. What did the input paths look like before you reset them? Did this reflect the system settings or the session settings? Now this is where you'll need to read the ebook to understand there's a difference between system settings and session settings. So let's just do this real quick. Boop. Okay. Setup IO input. So we did last time. Now we'll click on default. This says custom one two. Hit default. Let's watch what happens. Boom. It goes back to built-in microphone. This would be, let's see what this says here. Right here on page eight, system settings versus session settings. When we create a new session, and we use the last use input output uh, parameters, input output parameters, and I'm tongue tied today, too much coffee. Pro Tools uses your system settings on all pages of the IO setup dialog box in order to reflect any custom customizations you've made. System settings are interface specific. This means if you select a different audio interface at any point, Pro Tools will begin using the system settings for that audio interface going forward. Okay. Reset the output and bus pages. Select output. Note the audition path is set to none. This page reflects the last used system settings, so the session has no output paths available. Click default. The default output pass will appear. What does the audition path setting display after resetting the output pass? What is the purpose of the setting, and why might you want to change it? Okay, so we're going to go to output. So audition path. Now audition, for those of you that read the book, um, for example, we're in the workspace browser um, and you uh, want to hear what something sounds like before you import it, that's called auditioning. You're testing it out, kind of like auditioning an actor. Come in, read for me. Um, you know, you're gonna, you're going, I'm gonna see how you fit in this role. If I like you, then I'll keep you. Or in this case, I'll put you in the clip list. If I don't like you, then I'll go into the next one until I find the right audition that works with me, and then I'll put it in the clip list. So you can see it says none because I got rid of all the outputs, right? So it says to click the default button. The default output pass will appear. Default. Boom. It's back because it sees what my system settings are, right? My system settings on my Mac are outputs go through my built-in output. And look, the audition path and all these things that said none before are back. So now I will be able to hear, before I couldn't, because this is all set to none because there was no output, but by hitting default, I bring it all back. So this is a good thing to remember. If you're not hearing anything, go to your I.O. panel. And if there's nothing here, click on default. And nine times out of 10, it should Base, at the very least, go back to whatever your default setting is, which will be your basic sound card or your built-in output in this case. Okay, so then go to the bus page, scroll through the path list to examine the currently include buses, click default, the path list will update to display the default output buses and internal mix buses. Okay, so bus, see this? It still doesn't know because I need to set it back to the default. Boom, there we go. Now this is, um, I have a peripheral plugged in, and but it's not active right now, so that's what this is all about. So, but all we really need to know, but this is on my computer. All we really need to know is, boom, built-in output one to two is good to go. Okay, now let's add a new track. 
I'm hurrying up here because office hours are about to start. <laughs> so uh, we'll add a new audio track for use with the drums clip in the session uh, thing. Hold command while double clicking in the edit window below the guitar track. Okay. Hit OK here. And check this out. Interface, built-in microphone. Interface, boom. Watch, I'll play right now without the output active. As you can see, I have meters, but we can't hear anything. If I turn the output on, look, it's not grayed out anymore. There we go. Okay, so now it's said to hit Command, or that would be Control on Windows, and double click in this area below the guitar track. It just on it's a quick shortcut for creating a new track. Hit Command on a Mac or Control on the PC, double click below the track uh, in the empty space, and then it just automatically, automatically creates a new stereo audio track. So we want to name this drum, let's see here. Double click the track nameplate, rename it drums. Boom. Hold option while clicking on each of the clips in the clip list to audition them. So we're going to audition them, hit option. And this is a cool thing. When stuff is in your clip list, rather than dragging it over here just so you can hear what it is, you can audition them by putting your mouse over a clip, holding down option or alt on a PC. And you see a little, oops. Oop, hold on. Oh, I'm hitting the wrong button, sorry. <laughs> there we go. There you go, H hit option, you see a little speaker, and hold your uh, left mouse button. And you can try it out, you can listen to it. Or the guitar. Obviously I want the drums. So we're gonna drag it and position it at the beginning of the session. Oh, come on. There we go. Boom. There we go. And now press the space bar to play back the tracks. Okay, so I jumped ahead here. So what happened here, so what probably happened on your computer is when you, imp, when you drag in a file into a new track, it will uh, automatically create, well, I'm sorry, when you create a new track, it will create a new track based on what you just did in the input output window. But this track uh, would have still need to have gotten changed to built an output in order for me to hear something. So even though you change something here in the input output, for example, if you don't hear anything and go here and you hit default and you reset everything so it works again, it's, you still have to manually select it in your session as well. Otherwise, it just doesn't correct everything. But what it does do is once you correct it here, then whenever you make a new track, it will automatically have the output, your new I.O. settings that you just sort of redid or repaired in this case, um, ready to go. But the old one that wasn't working before, you you know, it doesn't automatically update. You actually have to click on it to update it yourself. So that might be what you're hearing on on your computer if when you're playing it, you're not hearing the guitar track. So if that is the case. All you got to do 
is click on your output, make sure it is going to the output that you reset in the IO settings and you're good to go. And then once you do that, listen to the session to ensure proper playback, save your work, and then um, hit return or enter to go back to the start of your session. That's right, save your work, always good to do that. Take a picture, send it to me, boom, exercise one is done. On to exercise two next.